This is the exciting story of the rediscovery and exploration of the cave found on top of Mount Kanaktai. According to old Indian legends, the Indians who have lived around the shores of beautiful Clear Lake at the base of Mount Kanaktai for over 12,500 years. This is a most sacred mountain. Legends tell of a cave at Horseshoe Bend that starts at the cliff on the shore and goes into the mountain. Indians walked into the cave and held religious ceremonies. Legend also says they buried their dead in this cave. When the water rose in the lake, they would paddle their reed boats up a short distance and caught blind fish. Another legend tells of the little people that lived inside the mountain during the cold times. Another tells that the Indians could notch sticks and throw them down a hole in the top of the mountain. They would find them floating in Horseshoe Bend. All this was long before the white man came. About 1880, a white hunting party stumbled on the cave on top of the mountain. They climbed down into the entrance and found a hole in the floor of the cave. In trying to measure the depth of the hole, they used long weighted strings up to 1,100 feet, but found no bottom. They dropped a bundle of burlap soaked in kerosene and lighted, and it disappeared straight down. Many people have visited the site in the last 90 years. Sometime between 1940 and 1970, the cave collapsed about 15 feet from the entrance, and the vertical shaft has not been seen since. In 1990, a couple of hikers rediscovered the cave, which had been lost in the heavy underbrush for several years, and reported the find. An exploration team was formed to reopen the cave and find and measure the vertical lava vent. In our investigation of the cave and the circumstances around it, we believe it will, we will find a very large room where the molten lava drained from the inside of the mountain and possibly a lake from where the legendary blind fish could have come. Now this is what I believe the inside of the mountain looks like, Mount Kanaktai, better known as the Zenith Gate. This was the upper world. This is a very sacred mountain to the Indians. Now, I believe what we're going to find once we get down in is this room here, which I think may be, very, very well be, the largest room in the world. I expect about 2,000 feet from this side to this side, somewhere around 2,400 to 2,600 feet deep to the bottom of the lake. This is the lake I believe is in there, about 90 feet deep, which exits through this underground stream over into Horseshoe Bend. Now I think there are other caverns down under here and other entrances. Now I've had many stories over the years of uh, these other entrances that have been found. However, we could not find them. I've sent, uh, we've spent many months searching these mountains for these entrances. This one is in the Buckingham area, Black Forest. This one, a gentleman told me that uh, when he was young, an Indian friend of his took him up to this one. They call it the Ice Cave, supposedly a ceremonial cave to the Indians and that it went down into this cavern down in inside here all interconnected with this the main one and of course this is the main vent this is the cave up here that we've been working in for four years and just before we were uh, told to get off the mountain we did find the this uh, vent at this point, we did not get a chance to measure it. We didn't get a chance to photograph it, but we did find the uh, vent itself. We drilled into it. Now here's another one that I call the Hummel shaft, and a fellow by the name of Hummel dropped some uh, a log with his and two other boys' initials on it, came down into the lake, went out through into Horseshoe Bend. This is the main one where the Indians supposedly dropped a log with uh, that was carved notches and it came out in the lake. Also stories of uh, other people have dropped things down in here, some four inch square blocks painted red and yellow came down and came out in Horseshoe Bend. This is another cave or 
shaft at South Peak supposedly comes down into a room over here. Now, to tell you why I believe the lake is as I have it pictured here, a gentleman drilled a well. He owned the uh, mobile home park over here, and he drilled a well for his park, went down about 40 to 50 feet and hit an artesian well sort of thing, and the water spurted out of the casing of his uh, drill about 50 feet in the air. He put valves on the uh, casings and so forth, and to this day when the lake is full after a good rain, this uh, he can open these valves and the water will shoot about 30 feet. Now, also, when the amount of water entering this lake from the western side of the mountain is more than this underground stream can handle, we have evidence of water coming out of the side of the mountain over in this area and again right over in this area. And uh, it, this is one of the reasons uh, I have pictures of them that I'll show you. and. It shows somewhere between three and 400 feet uh, above Clear Lake level is where I think we're gonna find this. Now this room over here, uh, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure is there, and this is where I think we're gonna find evidence of an ancient civilization, uh, namely the legend of the little people that lived inside during the cold times. Because we have evidence of caverns out in this area, and we're and we have the story of uh, Coyote uh, spending eight days drilling a, a tunnel into the mountain because he wanted, he got mad at the world, he wanted to burn the world down. And then he put Spider in charge of the entrance to the tunnel. And we found Spider, and I'll show that to you in a few minutes. I have some old high altitude photographs taken many, many years ago, 1940. That, and we found the spider, and it's still there. And of course, we're pretty. Sh we have evidence of uh, caverns out on the southeast side of the mountain. Now, this is the east side of the mountain, and this is one of the sources where the water comes out. This is where a water spout came out the side in 1964 and smashed the uh, mobile home park down below. This is a close-up of that one. A view of Shady Haven, the mobile home park that was below it where the water well was drilled and the water spurted out. Now this is uh, Richmond Park, which was an Indian village back in uh, 1900. A view of the southeast side of the mountain where when the lake uh, gets a little too high, the water comes out of the side and there's water running out of it right now and this is uh, February the 5th, uh, 1995. Water's running out of the side of the mountain there when the lake is being filled faster than the uh, underground stream can handle it. Here is the view of the spider that we uh, found on the old 1940s uh, map and this is where we also believe that we're going to find some caverns. Now this is what we expect to find. It's what we're looking for now. Is we're going to try to get into this cavern right here on the southeastern side of uh, Mount Kanaktai. Follow the caverns and we have evidence that we're pretty sure that these are, are where they are. Get into the main room over in this area. Here's, of course, the lake that we expect inside with the blind fish and so forth, and the underground stream that comes out over in Horseshoe Bend at Clear Lake. Now, of course, none of this is to scale. This is a room we believe goes over underneath uh, uh, Clark's Peak. Of course the main room 2,000 feet across and we figure around 2,600 feet high. The size of the lake inside I have no idea. 
but we believe there are other caverns. And in reading some of the old seismic information uh, that they have worked on, we believe we're going to find the caverns. Now, we've done a magnetometer test in this area, did another one up in this area, and they both indicate uh, spaces down underneath. And, of course, this is the area where the well was drilled, where he broke through at 12 feet and let out another 500 feet of cable. Now, we, that's kind of a curious statement. We, we're not quite sure what that means. 500 feet uh, for a lava tube is, is rather uh, out of the question, but uh, we do know that it was drilled in this area here, and we expect to go on in and get inside through here telling us about the cave that he was in and a lot of the old stories of the area, the Indians and uh, him being up at the cave, uh, a log down in, uh, he and two other fellows dropped a log down in that came out in Horseshoe Bend. And now I would like to take you up to the top of Wright's Peak and show you how we started in to the cave, the Howard Cave, and began our exploration of the mountain. As you can see, the brush down into the area was extremely thick. And here we are at the site. We've already set up our ropes and our safety equipment so that we can get in and out. Preston Stevens, who was one of the hikers that uh, first found the uh, cave, reported to me and we formed a team and now you see Norm Lerman, chief geologist for the Homestake Mining Corporation, a renowned volcanologist, and our number one advisor on the team. He's going down into 16 and a half feet down into the entrance as we first found it. Then he has to turn and go sideways through a very small crevice about 15 feet down into the main cavern. And now we're down inside you what it looked like as we first got in. Now we're showing the insignia on the wall, the names carved into the wall. There's Ewell Howard, dated 1934, and below it uh, R. Reed, 1931, and this was our main authentication that we were in the right cave. Now you see Norm down inside and he's taking down dimensions trying to figure out uh, just exactly how we ought to attack the cave here and find through the cave in and get back into where the main vertical lava tube is. We really expected to come down in here clean this out in about three hours and find our vertical shaft, but four years later we still haven't quite made it. And of course this is me coming out from one of the crevices. I promised my wife faithfully I'd never do this, but I just couldn't couldn't hold out. I had to get down in with the crew. Standing on our best guess for the deepest hole in the continent. We've run a magnetometer line now in uh, four different directions. One right parallel to the camera's view, one at right angles, and another one diagonal off of each of those lines. 
and in every direction we go, we get a bullseye magnetic low about uh, 12 feet in diameter that's centered right on this pile of rocks. The magnetic susceptibility of air is pretty low, so this is a good indicator that we've got a whole big column of air underneath us. The, uh, the magnitude of the, of the negative anomaly here is too great to be anything else. There's nothing in the local geology that should change that fast that would produce a 12-foot bullseye. So I think this is virtually without a question, the position at the surface above the drop. What you're seeing Lyle Stockwell back down in the cave. You can also notice the flow of uh, dust and air past the light coming down towards me. It's an inward flow again today. We've been just taking down the apron of material that washed in from the entry area. A coat of uh, latex molding material to the Uvell Howard signature. We're trying to build up a, a good thick rubber mold on that that we can peel off in a few days so that we can make some castings of the inscriptions on the wall. Peeling the latex mold material off of the Uvell Howard inscription. We've painted on about 10 coats and covered it with a layer of gauze. And this will allow us to make museum quality molds, castings of the inscription. You're just about to come to the signature there, Alan, so take her real gently at that central part. We just lost our lights. Okay, we're recording. Okay, we're back on the air again. Here comes the mold. You can start to see the reverse image of Uvell's signature there. See the 34. Now don't let the surfaces touch on that, Alan. They'll stick together until right. we dust them. All right, looks like we got a good peel. There you see the reverse image of Uvell Howard's inscription, cast in latex. Good. I like to kind of hold on to that rock up in front of you there and just kind of wait. Yeah, I got it. We'll make it eventually. I guarantee you I'd have never got down there. Might have to go back and take all the nickels out of my pocket or something. <laughs> Maybe he can push your feet. <laughs> yeah, I'm making it. Well, I'll shut this thing off for a minute and get out of Leroy's way. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we're on. Right, tape. you're on. Okay, we're here today with Leroy Thomas of Kelseyville. Leroy may very well be the last living person that's been all the way through this chamber to the hole that we're looking for. So I uh, thought we'd get Leroy here today and, and kind of record the story for history. When was it you were here, Leroy? Somewhere between 37 and 38, along in that period. Uh, it was after I was in high school probably a freshman or sophomore, and I think uh, I graduated from high school in 41. So... In the late 30s. Yeah, it would be in the late 30s. Mm -hmm. And you remember this entry pretty much? This pretty much the just, same. Yeah. Just, just. And you remember this, this entry squeeze being pretty much like we see behind us here? Right. Huh? Mm -hmm. You come into this room, the, these uh, initials were already on the wall, because it was after 34, here's a 31. Uh, mm -hmm. I can remember those. Uh, uh, I especially remember Howard here. Uh, so there's no doubt it, this is the right cave. To my recollection, this is. This is the one that everybody that, that knows the mountain talks about. And, and, and this is the one where you saw the hole right, going on down. Right, right. What you've got to bring to the party is the fact that you saw a hole. And, and dropped rocks in it. And dropped rocks yeah. in, in this cave. In this cave, right, right. Now, <clears throat> this is Nelson Hopper the holy man, village elder of the Eastern Indian Pomo clan from the Kanaktai area, and he has come up here to bless our mountain. Blow away one day. But I 
I feel that I'm glad I came. Good. Really. Good. This is old. This yeah. is this this goes back to your ancestors, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Carry that with you. Really. And I want to give him that piece. This is yours when you get to it. All right. Just take it with you. You don't need to. You can do what we do here. Really. If you don't, you don't need to do that. But take it with you. And when next time you come back up from town, let me give you think about bringing it back with you. I will. And uh, that's other things. And I, I think it'll make you feel better. Good. So. Uh, well, one of the reasons we're here, Nelson, is we want to be sure that we're sensitive to to your people's beliefs and your tradition and. and we don't want to do something that will offend the spirits of... Now we're over in Horseshoe Bend. I have two divers on the bottom, Kelly and Preston, and they're trying to find the underwater cave here. Now, <clears throat> we've gone round and round and round here for just about 10 days, and they're going around the boat here, and so far we have not found anything. The old stories tell us that the cave is about 200 feet out from this point. Now we're going to zero in on what they call split rock. And this was how the old timers identified where the area was. However, like all the rest of the things, the old timers have told us so much of it, we just have not been able to find. Uh, the cliff there at Buckingham and see if we can't find entrance to the cave bottom is awfully mucky. It's very difficult to see. <clears throat> up against the uh, rocks along the shoreline just to see if we can find some kind of an entrance on into the mountain here. We spent about 10 days doing this and of course we did not have any luck. Dirt, we're at the bottom of the monolith now. And we're just at the bottom, just underneath it. And now we're looking on up towards what we call the perch. And up there, he's lowering a rope and he pulls the buckets from down on the bottom on up through and out that hole, then out through the lower entrance and outside in the original entrance, eight feet across, down 16 and a half feet through a narrow squeeze. This is the area where the insignias, the names were carved in the wall, Ewell Howard. This is where Norm and Leroy gave their, had their little interview. And from this point on, this was all dug out. That's why we had to take up to 12 people to uh, remove all this dirt and on out and throw it away. Now, this, of course, we drilled through here, dug another uh, trench and so we could enter the cave through this way and, and instead of having to go all the way out. Right in this area is where we expected the vent. This is where the evidence of the old cave floor showed where the vent may have been. Of course it was so caved in that we couldn't work in this area so we had to go back into Havier's Hole, went down 27 feet through Havier's Hole and then we went sideways on the 060 and this is where we broke into the vent, right at this point. Now, we haven't actually been into the vent. We were deprived of that pleasure. We did, we did not get to measure the vent, and we did not get to photograph it. However, we did drill into it, and we were still a few feet away from it when uh, uh, we were removed from the mountain. A mystery underneath the Northern California mountain could it unlock a Native American secret? It's possibly the world's largest underground cavern, and it's located right here in Northern California. An exploration team has been atop Mount Concocti at Clear Lake for the last four years, trying to find a way into the volcanic mountain. But their work and the secrets those caverns may reveal may come to an end if some property owners have their way. Channel 3's Kimberly Plummer has the story in tonight's special assignment. Native Americans believe Mount Kanoktai is a sacred mountain. According to legend, more than 12,000 years ago, the Pomo Indians would descend deep inside the bowels of this mountain to a cavern where they would hold religious ceremonies. 
Legend also tells of the little people who lived inside Mount Kanakdai during the Ice Age. We got poison oak down here you got to watch out for. 73-year-old Bob Zalewski has dedicated the last 35 years of his life to exploring Mount Kanakdai and its history. What I think we're going to find is a lost city down in one of these big caverns down here that's an old people 10, 15, 20,000 years ago. That's what I, my dream is. I see it. Heavy door. But following that dream and unlocking the secrets of the mountain hasn't been easy. Don't touch any of the shoring. Because this is it's what holding these tremendous rocks off our head here. For four years, Zalewski's been working with a team of volunteers, including a professional geologist, searching for a way in. Maybe he can push your feet. <laughs> They've dug 67 feet under the ground, looking for what they believe will be the largest underground cavern in the world, possibly a mile across and more than 2,000 feet high. I've got stories of where they threw square, four-inch square wooden blocks. They painted them red and yellow and threw them down this hole that came up in the lake. Leroy Thomas may be the last living person who says he's seen the black hole that drops into the cavern. He and his high school buddies used to come to the cave in the late 30s before the mountain shifted and sealed the entrance. I can't remember how far through that hole that, that, that I went till the hole went straight down. And then we just dropped rocks and tried to listen to see if we could hear them hit. This is what Zalewski envisions. A vertical shaft at Wright's Peak dropping into a giant triangular shaped cavern. Inside, a lake estimated to be 90 feet deep. That lake sits 300 feet above the level of Clear Lake outside the mountain. Zalewski also believes there are several other ways into the cave, including an underwater tunnel. He's even sent divers down looking for an underwater entrance and fish without eyes who've lived in darkness for millions of years. We know that the room is there. But what's going to be interesting is to find out what else is there. Possibly ancient Indian artifacts. But Zalewski and his crew may now have to start from scratch at another location on the mountain. His team is being ordered off the property where they were digging. The property owner who okayed his exploration project yeah. has passed away. Inside Kanoktai Mountain on the shores of Clear Lake, one man has been searching for this nothing for years. But now he's been forced to stop. New Center John Kessler explains. <laughs> This is a sacred land. Homo Indian legend tells of the gate to the upper world here. It was also Indian belief the little people lived under this mountain and may still. Indian legend. <laughs> I've, I've got books of it. That come Bob Zalewski isn't looking for the little people. He wants to find the world's largest room. It's here. All the old pioneers in town, they know it's here. They, they've heard these stories for generations here. Stories like back in the late 1880s when Heck Miller and his hunting buddies found a hole in the floor of this cave. That would have been right there. A hole down which a thousand feet of weighted string was lowered, never to touch bottom. A hole into which Indians threw a notched log, only to have it found floating in Clear Lake, two miles away at the mountain's base. Zalewski and many others believe that hole is the entry to what could be one of the true wonders of the world, a huge cavern with an underground lake that may have blind fish, fish the Indians say they've caught near another cave on the shore of Clear Lake. We move anything in this hole, everything comes down on our heads. But sometime after 1940, a cave-in covered that hole, and underbrush hid the cave. I spent 35 years investigating this until we finally found the cave. For the past four years, Zalewski and dozens of volunteers working weekends have searched for that hole, digging by hand to lead the way cigar smoke, which was mysteriously pulled further into the cave. You're so close. Yeah, we're close. Disappointing. We decided we'd have to do a different approach to uh, the mountain. So Dan and I got out the camera, and I'm getting my airplane ready for a <clears throat> a flight, and we're going to go over the mountain and see if we can find <clears throat> possibly some new entrances. And look at some of the things that the old-timers have told us and some of the other stories and see just what in the world we can do next.
So we fly round and round the mountain. This is the Black Forest area where the ice cave was supposed to be at the top there. And we're coming into the area between uh, Buckingham and Wrights Peak. And in that area, there's an old airplane crash. And supposedly, there's a hole that a fellow by name Fay Wills found when he was hunting. And we're going to have to look into that one, see if we can find that one. Over in here is the area where the uh, Monument Rock is, and supposedly there's an entrance in this area we've been told about. So we're flying around here trying to figure out just which project we ought to start next, or should we go down onto the Clifton property where the wells were supposedly drilled? And that's the story of old Alden Hummel that uh, and this is the area, the Clifton property. Alden Hummel was drilling for water here, and supposedly it, uh, his drilling tool broke through into a void at 60 feet, 48 feet of dirt, and 12 feet of rock, and somewhere in this area, there's a big void uh, down underneath. And of course, just on up above this, why we have the sinkhole and that's what you're looking at now is a sinkhole and according to our geophysicist Jerry Nelson he said the only reason you get a sinkhole because uh, down underneath there's a void of some sort that the uh, the uh, fill or the dirt in this sinkhole can run down into so it looks I think we've just about decided our next project is to see if we can find the void down underneath the Clifton property. Then I got a call from uh, a fellow by the name of Hack Edwards, who's a dowser. He comes from up in northern Oregon, and he volunteered to come down here and see if he could help us find where the wells were drilled on the Clifton property. And here we are discussing the area and seeing if we can figure out uh, just exactly which way to attack this one. Then Hack and I went up on the Clifton property and he's got his dowsing rods and I'm following along behind him with the measuring wheel so we can see what he can find. See what we could find. Logging all the positions that Hack has found. Seeing what we can find there taking compass headings and so forth. We'd finished uh, Hack's work up there and I wanted to get uh, my geophysicists, geologists and their magnetometer team up and see what they could find. I rented a helicopter and uh, we came over to an area where we thought we had found a door and we did a lot of work there, almost two months worth then it didn't pay off. And now we're on our way over to uh, take a look at the sinkhole, see what it looks like uh, looking straight down when we ran across another little goody here. Right there, you see it, uh, and I call it the uh, stepped mausoleum. But uh, we went there and we took a look at that, and it was just a piece of natural phenomena. We thought I had been told there's a possibility of an entrance being in that position. Over toward the Clifton property and the sinkhole, and right now we're over what we call Legend Hill. Supposed, according to the dowser, there's a big room down underneath Legend Hill. This is Legend Hill right, right below us now. And as you can see, I'm hanging out an open door in this little tiny helicopter. And here we come up on the sinkhole. This is Legend Hill. And here's a good view of the sinkhole. And we're going to see if we can't get out over the top of it and zoom in and see where some of these big water courses. There's a shadow of the chopper I'm riding in and look at the water courses there that 
come down through this sinkhole to just about in the center of the picture there and water just disappears. It goes down into a pile of rocks, down into something down below that we don't know what it is and our dowser tells us there's a room down underneath and we're going to get the uh, geologists with the uh, magnetometers up, see what they can find. Look at those water courses. And then all of a sudden they disappear and down below, no sign of water at all. Geology team. And we're gonna do the Clifton property with uh, magnetometers. We have our chief geophysicist, Jerry Nelson and his good friend, uh, another geophysicist, Bill Black, and his wife, Liz, who's an archeologist. And we're going to start doing the magnetometer tests on the uh, property. And here we are on the east-west road. We're looking west now, and right on the background is Legend Hill where we believe there's a very large room and we think that's the one that the people lived in back during the Ice Age. And we're zooming in on uh, the area on going up up toward Legend Hill and that's Legend Hill right there in the center. Of course, South Peak over on the right. Now this is Legend Hill, and we think there's a big room down there, about 90 to 100 feet below the surface. The results of the magnetometer test, and it shows a big room there on the Clifton property. Part of it is on Wyckoff property, and we just yesterday got permission to go over on that property and drill. So now we can drill anywhere in the entire area where this uh, magnetometer readings show that there's a large room down underneath. Now, we're hoping that uh, we can find where Hummel drilled his uh, wells back in 1954, went down 60 feet into a large void, but uh, well, all we can do is the readings for Legend Hill. Top of Legend Hill, and of course, the magnetometer just read down to a very low reading, which means that we possibly have a room down under Legend Hill and another one here underneath the uh, sinkhole. And the trail you see down below is where Hack Edwards and I, I followed him and cut 1,100 feet of trail while he... Uh, uh, found positions where uh, we have lava tubes in the room and so forth. So combining between the dowser and the magnetometers, we decided that we would drill. The point or the drill site that we picked had the lowest magnetometer reading on out of a thousand uh, positions that we took. And we decided that uh, this would be the place to drill. So now I'm standing here and waiting for the truck and there it is. Dan McCollum has come over for the third time now, the third time he's volunteered to drill a hole for us. And there's Dan himself and we're getting ready to drill hole number seven. to record it so that we can get the how far it is from the surface down to hard rock. In other words, how much dirt then into the rock and how much rock we've got to go through before we break on the uh, drill truck, erecting the, uh, the I will get the drill head on. Give Dan a little advertising. 
he hasn't charged us a nickel and this is a big piece of equipment pretty expensive for fuel and so forth and Dan has volunteered he to get down into the ground and just turn the water on which lubricates the uh, drill head and there we are starting the drill there Dan Doherty and Grant Carey assisting uh, Dan with the drilling Tony Marchetti blowing the foam out of the hole this is what brings the dirt up from the base and also lubricates our drill head and we went down here 95 feet 95 feet and I had expected to hit it at about 35 and of course we just didn't find anything but all 1940s photograph that the military took uh, and it had been kept in the museum in Lakeport and uh, Donna Howard found it and gave it to me to look and now what I'm looking for on this old photograph which had been taken shortly after the mountain had burned down and uh, showed almost all of the ground now what one of the things I want to show you right now is something we have found on this old photograph as you can see now it's a little square over toward the right almost uh, just a below dead center up and down is a square and we believe it's made out of uh, <coughs> flagstone about three feet high and from uh, the figures that we've got we figure that from that altitude what we see here is about a 40 foot square made out of flagstone and you can see a black center a white around that and then you see petals like and I call it the daisy now just what this is we are not sure we have found in our searching on uh, what we now call daisy hill there uh, some uh, flagstone walls it looked like it could be part of this and if, if you look at the picture again you'll see just to the left side of it another little square and it looks like it's got a diamond shape uh, in it now just what these things are I really and here is another thing you see is the what we call a spider now we found that on this photograph and we have actually found that and it's still on the ground where uh, where it was it's uh, owned by some people and they say that it will never be desecrated they're going to take care of it I hope to have it rededicated some future time but what I'm looking here and as you see there is the old trail that goes right to what we call the spider and the only place we've ever seen anything like that uh, going through history is down in Peru now both of these things I think came from down in Peru now here's another little goodie that we found carved on a stone up near a, a cave opening or a, an opening in the ground where the air is blowing out very hard showing that it is somehow connected to the room inside the mountain but look at the this uh, carving the rock itself is so desiccated it has almost disappeared if the Sun isn't just right you can't even see this but it is a hexagon with sun sun lines carved into it and right down and there of course is the hole that we found right near that and here we've got a camera down looking into it of course we have gone further now and we've down into that about 60 feet and we'll show you that uh, a little later but we think this goes down into a lava tube that goes on into the mountain now we <clears throat> showing you what it looks like further down in the hole we're probably about 40 feet down in now 
And there's Jeff uh, Holdren, who found the uh, cave, and he's back on in it. And uh, we'll let him describe uh, what it looks like. This is one of the caves we found, and we'll go on from here. Stand in this crevice right here, this entrance off a little bit with my body, and it'll actually be whistling uh, by my head here when the uh, the pressure on the insides more extreme than the outside, and it's trying to level out with the outside pressure. It's blowing a lot of air out of here. Right now, you could barely feel it. It's just come, come out of here a little bit. During the summer months, we'll come up here and it'll be actually sucking in. Uh, and the high pressure is pretty built up on the outside. Then we went on to our next project. We're continuing with this one. However, we decided we would try to find something else that we had been told about in the old days. and So we <clears throat> moved our equipment and now we're going to see if we can't find uh, what they call the ice cave. <clears throat> or this uh, gentleman, when he said that when he was young, an Indian boy took him up there and showed it to him and of course when he got back, his grandfather punished him for showing a white boy where this Indian cave was. And however, we found it, and uh, I'm going to let you look at uh, a little bit of it here. Okay, this is, uh, let's give you a, a shot real quick where we came in. Okay, that's the hole up here. Okay, and we came down into this room here. Okay, we're starting to... Okay, hold on. Hold on before you do that. Uh, okay, now straight down. There's the bottom. I'm trying to get the light down there when you reach the bottom. Okay, now Jim's going to throw a rock and it goes. Okay, that time it didn't go, but it, it goes a long ways and, and uh, sounds like it hits water to a certain point. I think once we got, uh, we were able to get lower here. And I'll tell you what, I'm ready to do it today. He has, he has that rope. Hear that one? Yeah, it keeps going. Here, if he hits the angle, angle a certain way, let me get a bigger one. If he hits the angle down there a certain way, Oops. it'll keep rolling. That, see, that time it didn't roll, it stopped. Yeah. Now, see, that's one side of it. Hold on, Jimmy. And then over here, this is another side. If you can see it, it doesn't end there. It looks like it turns, just like that other one's doing. It almost turns around this big rock here, both directions. Uh, and this is this is this is really bizarre. But that's that's pretty. There's some water here, running down. Look at look at look at this. This is. Look at this on the wall in here, Jimmy. Um, it's a buildup of. Um, Look at that. Oh, cool. That's, that's like a, you know, like the real caverns have a bit. There's more of that down below. How about if we pitched a rock? This is it, Bob. I think we got it. Because it, it sounds like it goes way down there even deeper. Jeff, um, yeah. Yeah. Like that way. How about if we pitched a rock that way? Does yeah, pitch a rock that way. 